So we're going to create a little, uh, I guess, a filtering logic here that will permit signals if price is within a one standard deviation band. And if price is outside the one standard deviation band, then we'll block signals. All right. So, all right, there's some kind of a name for this logic template. Um, let's see. All right, so first, I'm just going to generate a bunch of signals. So this will be kind of like our example signals here. Okay, so there we go. So we have uh, a node kind of representing our, our logic here that's going to be generating uh, the signals here. So there we go, lots of signals on the chart that we can use to filter out. Um, and so now, yeah, let's grab a comparison solver and we're going to set input A, we'll set that to price. And so we'll just check to see when the close, closing price is outside the standard deviation. You know, if you want later on, we could uh, make something a little more complex to make sure that the entire bar is outside of the standard deviation but I'll just take the simple approach at first and we'll just make sure the closing price is outside this day. Or we'll make sure that the closing price is inside the standard deviation, I should say. All right, and let's see, uh, input B, that's gonna be our Bollinger Band. All right, so I'm gonna generate a long signal when price is above the upper band will generate a long signal. And when price is below the lower band, we'll generate a short signal here. Oh, there we go, no wonder. My standard deviations are different here. Okay, there we go. So I need to set my standard deviation to one on there. There we go. Okay, so good. We're getting a short output when price is below the band and a long output when it's above the band. Um, and yeah, so now I guess it does help to put something together. So I can see that I will need a long short modifier here for this. However, what I will need is the addition I'm going to want to use the addition mode here because I'm going to want a long and a short output at the same time. So if I want to create just, just purely a filter, just a pure filter, that's a non-directional filter, then I want to generate a long and a short output. Uh, so let's see, actually, hold on. I got this backwards, don't I? Let me... Let me reverse the outputs here. So I'm going to reverse the outputs for the comparison solver. And, ha, okay. Now it's making sense. Okay. So there we go. We're going full circle there. So yes, um, we will need the product now. So, so you can see, so if, if we're looking, if we want to identify, or if the filter is to filter signals um, when price is outside the bands, we're going to use the addition. If we only want to see signals when price is inside the band, then yes, there we go. So in that case, we need product, right? We're going to need product. So here, let's... Uh, Let's set up a couple of examples here. All right, so there's one for price being inside the bands. All right, and let's give this solver a name here before we go too far. All right, so there's one filter for price being inside the bands. And let me make a copy of this comparison solver and then we'll set this up as a filter for when price is outside the bands. 
Okay, and so I'm going to put the outputs back to normal, back to their default settings here. There. All right. Now, let's put that new comparison solver on the board here. And let's grab another long short modifier. All right, and as we found out earlier, we want to use the addition mode. Okay, so there we go. So we have two, uh, two filters there. Uh, and then simply, we just need an AND node. So we can take our signal here plug it into the AND node. And there we go. So now we only have signals if the closing price is inside the bands. Yeah, so there we go. No signals if, if um, the close of the bar is outside the bands there. All right, and we could disconnect that, connect the other one, and now we only have signals if prices outside the bands. All right. So there we go. All right. Yeah, you know, so, sometimes this stuff um, can be hard to visualize without building it first. So. Yeah, so there we go. So there's an example. There's your example there, Luke, of using the long short modifier with product yeah, and filtering signals with the Bollinger Band. All right, let me take a look at the chat board here. Let's see. All right, so you wanted no signal if the bar is completely outside the band. Okay. All right, yeah, we'll make that modification here. Um, so let's see here. Um, yeah, let me go through and rename these solvers here. So instead of just saying price, we'll say the close. All right, so both of those are for the close. And again, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to make a copy. Let's see here. Yeah, copy of this comparison solver. Yeah, close outside the Bollinger Band. Let's make a copy of that and let's rename this so it just says the bars outside the Bollinger Band. All right, and I'll modify the prices here in a minute. So let me just put this new one on the board first. All right, so I think this should be pretty straightforward and easy. So I think uh, we just need to adjust input A, we need to adjust the prices here. So for, for a long, so remember a long is when uh, we're generating a long when price is above the bar. So how do we know that the bar is completely outside the band? Well, we look at the low price of the bar, right? So the low of the bar will tell us that. So instead of the closing price, we want to look at the low of the bar. And then for the short, for the short output, right, you're going to use the opposite price. So we'll use the high. Um, yeah, so if we take a look at this, so there we go. We can see the, the bar is completely outside the band. And right here, we have a wick that's just barely inside the band there. So it's touching it. Um, it's probably just inside the band. Um, by a few fractions of a penny there, right? Outside the band, outside the band, outside the band, and there we go. Part of the bar is inside the band, no signal. So no signal. Yeah, so there we go. So we can just take that, um, and then let's grab another long short modifier. 
And I'll just rename this node here. There we go. And oh, let's set the mode there to addition. Yeah, there we go. All right. And we can connect that into the AND node. And there we go. All right. So there we go. There's signals when price is completely outside the band. Okay, so with that, let me take a look at the chat window here and see what we have. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. You said no signal if the bar is completely outside the bands. Okay. Yeah, let's, we'll add that here to the list. All right, so let me make a copy of uh, the comparison solver for inside the Bollinger Band. There we go. And we'll rename this. Uh, let's see. Oh, we want to make sure the whole bar is inside. Yeah, okay. All right, so I'm going to put this new solver on the board here. And let's see. All right, so again, for this new solver here, we just need to find the right price prices to use. Um, so we'll just try the same prices here, and let's see what we get. Let's see. No, that's not quite right. Yeah, there we go. All right, so I just had to uh, use the opposite prices here for this solver, right? So for the long, I'm using the high price, whereas the other solver here, so for detecting if the bar is outside, right? For the long, I was using the low of the bar but for detecting if the bar is inside the bands, I'm using the opposite price here. And also remember I had, um, I had uh, reversed the outputs here, right? So we're using A less than B instead of A greater than B. So I reversed those outputs as well. Um, and let's grab the Let's grab another long short modifier. All right, connect that all together and select the correct mode here. So here we go. Yeah, mode equals product. Um, and let's take a look at the chart. So basically, I should only see an output if the bar is completely inside the band. Yeah, it looks like right there, um, you know, you might you know, use some discretion here and decide that you know, if the bar looks like it's barely touching the band, that that's acceptable. But mathematically, the, the uh, low of that bar is probably just a fraction of a penny outside the band. Um, so, but just checking some of these others. And let's see here. Yeah, that looks good. That that's outside, there we go, inside. And you have the low is just barely outside the band there. Yeah, that bar's inside. Okay, yeah, so that's good. It all looks good. So, let's rewire our logic here. And so there we go. So there, that would be signals if the bar is completely inside the band. All right, so our long short modifier 
is set to product and then here is the comparison solver there you go and let me see what else we have in the chat board here all right yep no nope. no other questions here okay guys well uh then uh yeah we'll we'll wrap this workshop up and just remember tomorrow um tomorrow is the blackbird workshop here let's get the blackbird there we go all right so tomorrow's the blackbird workshop you guys are always welcome to jump in the blackbird workshop if you don't know what blackbird is uh, and so if I don't see you tomorrow, then have a good weekend, guys. And, uh, um, oh, yeah, shoot. Let me uh, just remind you guys. I should have well, I pointed this out earlier here. Um, I am going to be out of town, out of my office for about six weeks. So, um, all right, so starting next week to... Um, July, I'm going to be out of town, so um, I do plan on doing the workshops, but I might need to cancel a workshop, uh, you know, with with, um, with very short notice. So um, yeah, so just just be aware of that that during this time period, uh, some of these workshops um, might be canceled. Uh, so while I'm, while I'm uh, out of town here. All right, guys, have a good weekend, and I hope to see you guys next week. Thanks. Bye-bye.